All right, we are now recording. Yay. All right, welcome everybody to the Digital Bar Rebar Meetup, meeting 26. I'm Greg Althaus, and with us today we have uh, a couple of Rob Hirschfelds, Shane and Chris Trees. That sound about right? Sounds about right. All right. So today we thought we'd continue our bug scrub and try and get that kind of finished up and then take some community questions and answer session and then maybe be done. Seems like a reasonable plan. I'm in favor. Yeehaw, cowboy. Then I will share my screen. I think. Oh my gosh, where'd everything go? Oh, which screen? All right, we should see my bug. So basically, I pulled up the DR provision issues tree, and um, I figured I'd start at the top and skip the ones we've marked as reviewed and keep going from there. Um, from a general principle perspective, if it's marked verified and hasn't been touched in quite some time, I'm just gonna close it. Does that make sense? I think that's a good policy. And by a while, I mean like a month or so, okay? Um, let's see, first one is iPixie loop in OS other package. So, um, this person tried it with uh, ESXi iPixie with Eufy and it actually worked, um, which we didn't necessarily think it would, but apparently the iPixie binaries for that do work, at least in his environment. So um, I figure we can undo the infinite loop that it is and go with a, if it crashes, it crashes mentality for that path. Um, so I figured we'd fix it. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I think it was done on purpose because we couldn't really test it well. Um, and it may be highly dependent upon the ESXi he's working with. So maybe in the latest ES ESXi they fixed some of the UFI uh, stuff which is entirely possible. So, let's see. Moving on to 866. Let's see, Shane writes about missing a boot end blink on the stages panel. In the UX. Yeah, uh, so I think that was on the stages, okay. All right, I'm looking real quick. It is not fixed, can you enough? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's there. And, but I mean, it's not there in, I assume you mean in the uh, editor page. Yeah, stages panel. Yeah, okay. Uh, or even as that, okay, so this would be Easy. It should be easy to fix. Sorry, I didn't. No, it's, it. it's just marked verify. That's why I was kind of surprised. But anyway. Yeah, I thought I fixed it ages ago. Okay. I will unmark the. Oh, stop. There you go. 
Okay, fine. I will learn to drive one day. Labels it is not verified. It is. Um, new machine object can't modify boot in or stage. Oh, this is in the UX. Oh, wow, with a video, too. Hmm. Rob added verify 14. Oh, because you thought it was fixed. Right. So, yeah, I thought if we fixed this within the day it came in. Uh, OK. Yeah, we did. This, this we fixed right away. Okay. So this, this was a legitimate bug. It's still right, online. I could we'll change to, it. Uh, verify it and see. Okay. Uh, back, I think. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I forgot to mark it. Dang it. Uh, this would be like the most boringest meetup ever. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta you gotta pay down the debt. But it's okay, I'm driving, so it can be boring. All right, let's see. <laughs> um, this is already resolved and should be verified and was added last week, so we will leave it for the time. Being. Basically, they were asking for, could you specify a URL file and other stuff on the imports and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can't delete, then add task to a stage when cloning it. I want to say that was fixed already and reviewed. Um, let's see. Enable custom field display and configuration and polymer output. Uh, that actually is done, I thought. You, wait, wait, hold on. Only for machines. Uh, yeah, we didn't do it completely custom. It's the machine inventories are now customizable, which is different than what this is asking. Um, yeah, you have that show button now that switches the table content, right? Yeah. Um, it's possible to do this. It's a, it's a, this is, this is, so the question, I guess, back to Shane is this is useful for the inventory items, but it only shows parameters. It doesn't show the fields that you were showing as an example. Um, yeah, take off verify. Uh, it's, and it's actually not that big of a UX request. Um, the problem, the thing that makes it a pain is being able to edit them. The editor's hard to build. The uh, making it configurable is easy. <laughs> Okay. Um, because it's just like we added menus are now customizable, but edited. <laughs> but you have to know yeah. how. Yeah, you have to know how. Right. A whole set of user preference menus that need to be. Yeah, there's a, that's a there's a feature, a whole feature for that. Yeah. And then here's the general user preferences one. We've made progress, but it's still not there. Yeah. There's a whole. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, it sounds like we almost need a, a feature bundle that says user preferences to collect those under a release. Maybe I'll do that in the background, Greg. Okay. Um, let's see. Enable the description field and reservations to be editable. I believe that is it. Right. Yes. And you can definitely create it that way. And it's not edible. Yeah, it's fixed. I'm going to close it because, well, it was April. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Enhanced name. Currently, the name field for machine in the UX uses a short name in the event. Does. Yeah. So this. So shows, you add you, it shows you the rest in the in the in the description field if there's no description. Right. And so the question is, is that sufficient? Yeah. If I put long names in, then the fields get super super nasty. Choose FQ. So okay. So hold on. Let me hit save, um, and you can attach it to a project called uh, UX preferences, <laughs> UX user okay. preferences. Yeah, if we come to more of those, then we'll, we'll do that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go fix them in the past. Shane, what do you think about this one? You still? Uh, sorry, I wasn't looking. Which one? Um, An enhanced name. Name filed for machine object. Well, yeah. I'm not going to comment on the author. Um, Basically, the workaround right now is that if description isn't filled in, yeah. the, the long name is put into the description field on the machine's table. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I don't know. It's just it's sort of a window dressing thing. Uh, we had a customer that had this problem specifically. They were using tertiary zones to separate clusters, but all the machine names were all the same and they couldn't distinguish between them. And then, then we added, um, Rob, I think you added uh, stuffing the long name into the description field. I did. Um, and then that sort of helps some. So it's, uh, you know, the question is, is that enough or not? Um, Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do if the, you have the, a long name. Um, panic and dump the registers. What? Panic and dump the registers. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. It's always a good backup. Um, so I, I think the, the longer term would be nice to have, but I don't know how, you know, this gets back to being able to customize the UX somewhat where you can set preferences. That's sort of a much longer term, bigger ask in general, because there's a number of areas where it'd be nice to be able to say, I want to see it this way or these number of fields. Um, for now, I think um, adding it, just a long name field or I don't know. Maybe at least just set the hover over value to the long name. I think we need a little more feedback from other users than us on what would be 
Nice. Oh, wouldn't you love to have that? It's not implemented. Um, there's actually a class of things that need this. Yep. Can you add another one, Rob? Because I think there's a couple others that fall into this from a project perspective. Or, um, oh, is he still here? He may be here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to create, well, I'm going to take a note to create a project and add these to it. Because I think there's a whole filtering thing anyway. Because in theory, the, the filter itself can take wildcards. But the underlying system doesn't do anything with it. So um, there's a whole filtering on um, the API side feature to which this would just fall out when it shows up. Um, because we don't do things like wildcarding, we don't do list contains, we don't do substring, right? Those kind of things would be useful for filtering. But to do the filtering, we have to uh, actually support it in the back end, and we don't right now. So I started looking at that. It's not. Some of it is easy, and some of it is not. Workflow editor rendering issue with non-existent stage. Okay, so this is still a bug we need to review. Or, um, fix. Make this back. Press fix. Review, review, access method variables within go control. <laughs> um, so I think this is handled now, strangely enough. Possibly. Spring and inventory content um, it is. Talks about that. All right, let's see. Um, task failure should mark meta icon appropriately. Yeah, I think this has already been fixed. We get all sorts of interesting stuff now. I think that's resolved. I'm actually going to mark this in for All right, let's see. Next, bulk actions. Task fail, provide no feedback. Um, and we do now, that's what those little icons in the top of the table are when you do the bulk action. Um, so you can see what. Oh, wait. Never mind. This is resolved. Or it should be fixed. I'll leave it that way. Um, the icons change. We get feedback 
in the top of the table on individual action. Add service start time to info get. Okay, I guess we didn't do that. So, okay. Not a bad idea. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Done. Done and dusted. All right. That's a that's easy enough to do. Why I didn't do that before, other than I just ignore shame, I guess. I don't know. This is still an issue, and I've seen it myself. I'm not sure how we resolve it, but. Refresh does not refresh preferences. I believe this is now fixed. I'll leave it for verify. Uh, let's see. Add click through for profiles. Stages probably boot ins on machines display. And those are all there now. Yeah. Okay. Came on the bulk action. All right, so those are, that's definitely done. I just verified it in my own little window over here. Add switch to output YAML and Instead of JSON in the UX. This is not done. It's a reasonable request, though. Find a YAML or YAMLizer. Changing a reservation for a machine. You should obviously not update correctly. Still need to consider this one. I think this is still a problem. Um,
There is a there is an issue with this in the sense that that tracking is only updated when we go through sledgehammer. So if you change the reservation on a system that was already booted and installed. Okay, more thought on that one. The real issue, though it happens less now that we have the bugs in the content pack with the hardware adders field working correctly. But the use case is real. Is real. Um, let's see. And All right. If meta icon doesn't exist, render a default. Yeah, this is actually surprisingly really hard. It's still an issue too. Hmm. Okay. Uh, DRP events when no pixies and pulls. This is implemented now. You can now get events on file transfers and other items. Sorry, I'm just reviewing and talking. Uh, oh man, this is, yeah. I think the suggestion would be to run it in a container on Windows. If they had to use the Windows, poor people. That's a good suggestion. Right now, there's just too many issues with the um, Linux based um, Linux based and Mac based um, networking stack to get some information on DHCP and other stuff. So it doesn't map to Windows only. All right, add job logs to machines and bulk actions machines. Right, I think this is all there now. You can get to the job logs from, oh, yeah, and Rob thinks he fixed all of the rest of the parts for that, so it should be, should be there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's in there now. Okay. Um, got issues. Add theme switcher.
So this is one of those would be nice to have long term, um, and it may be applicable for things like MSPs and um, uh, that uh, rethemed dashboards, rebranded, rebranded. Yeah. All right. I will leave it as an enhancement. I don't think we have any direct goal to work on this in the short term, but it's reasonable to keep open. Um, let's see. Wow, we're actually, oh my God. Um, and I know Chris was talking about reopening and looking at some of this stuff. Um, and uh, he's also posted in some yeah. Have a quick quick chat about that when we finish before we close up shop. Okay. okay. Then I think we'll leave this and this is probably a good place to push some of those discussions if we want to record them. So as well. Let's see, contents need. Let's see, currently the methods install. Oh, yeah, we have all sorts of better ways to do this now. Oh. So this is actually getting from the CLI content packages, but yeah. there are a lot of longer term or more uh, deeply sort of embedded issues around licensed content and uh, authentication authorization and open content and Argue we should make it a lot easier. But, um, all right, remove endpoints. Hey, good. All right, I think this is better now. There's a lot of cleanup over the summer, so we should ver definitely verify. That works, but it's still sort of intermittent. Okay. Right. I did. I did. That did get fixed. It got better. Okay. Go better. Uh, yeah, we still have never fixed this. <laughs> oh no, our regex issue. It's not regex. Yeah. I think at this point we may just need to fix it. Because it doesn't really functionally matter. At this point, I'm not sure we should be enforcing it. Or it shouldn't be, yeah. The user wants to name something that won't work well. A little bit. Okay. I think, I think I'm going to close this and see if it comes back at this point. Um, close that. Come on. Uh, name. Uh, still don't have a compression library. Note. Well, the, there's some libraries that aren't in there to deal with it. And we either have to write our own or still call out. And, well, yeah.
but it's still there. Uh, resizable content windows. So those are there for some of them, but probably not all of them. No, that's a uh, harder. So we'll leave it. We got some, but. Yeah, it's, it's a question of, of switching things to using that editing panel that has some, it's okay, but not great. It's... Yeah, and so this is still there. Um, there are some places that we do generate examples. Um, some of the, like the swagger stuff will show some examples sometimes, but we still don't do it as a CLI API helper kind of thing. So. And then there's also the whole minimum set requirement too, which is kind of strange in our model. So it's still there. Is this something that could just show up in the docs or is it? Well, the docs have some, and like I said, the Swagger stuff shows up too, but some APIs have taken to being able to say like, blah, 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 example, right? Ah, uh, I see. Kick back a, here's a mostly populated what it would look like thing. Um, I've been, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I've been updating the Ansible stuff to switch it to using the API instead of uh, the CLI. That's the reason why it's taking a bit longer than I expected, but uh, I had to reverse engineer basically all that through um, doing it through various different places. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but the sample would be helpful. Um, well, if I could, if I knew where to put the examples, then I could submit a PR for that. Challenge is the, AP, uh, the docs are all machine generated, so you you'd either yeah. you need to put them into the code base, or we you could create a page in the docs that would be like machine reference examples. But they they get stale as we modify the docs. Is the yeah. Okay. Um, Um, you can, you know, you can pull the JSON for objects that exist out for in the UX, just flip to the JSON views. Can the unit test generate these samples? Um, unit test has some, yes. So that may be something. As a... Uh, Problem is right now, yeah, okay. Okay. So one of the challenges is that our models are set up to be fairly empty and empties will work, but that doesn't help you if you're wanting to know the full fields and stuff. And so, um, Okay, I will. I didn't realize you were being annoyed by that, Stan. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not annoying. It's just more time com time consuming. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Clean up exploded ISOs. That's still out there. It's not done. So I'm gonna remove verify that. Problem is, we don't know. Good story for that. Um, let's see, reservations should not always. I 
I want to review this because I think this is good. Okay. I think we fixed this in the last round. If not, I will. Uh, this is the other indexer one, filtering one. This is another one that I need to catch it. That falls under the wild carding. Yeah. yeah. It's related. Template preview. We did it. Yeah, there's a, we should document it. I thought it was documented. There's a, I think there's an FAQ for it and then the UX just shows it. Well, but the UX showing it, it's only on a failed job, right? Or on no, the UX shows it on, um, no, it, it show it on a on a run job. It just won't show if you run a new, because of the way that works. If you run a second job, it'll show you the. It only shows you the latest, um, which can be confusing. But it, yeah, it does show you correctly for failed and run jobs. Um, we should document that um, so that we know, or at least it's in the bug, so people search. Right, but it's it's still not a preview. It's a post view after the jobs run. Then you can see the rendered oh. templates. That's a good point. <laughs> I, which is better than I mean nothing. So previously well, we didn't bubble that up, and you had no idea what the rendered template looked like without capturing at machine side or you know other goofiness. Yeah, I think there is actually a way to do it. Actually, Ooh, yeah. I think because of some of the arch work that Victor was working on that's in the PR that I still need to pull in at some point, I think some of this got better. So we need to review. Because I think this may actually be present now. Um, the UX won't do anything with it, but I think there's a way to actually get some of that value, those values now. And then strangely enough, much the way was suggested of so, and boot in preview is the same. Um, it's got the same problems. So it's not. It's not done either. And then one. Restrict auto generated tokens. Yeah. I'm not. This is one of those, it's good, but it's not always true. It's a nice quasi safety feature for restricting tokens and where the machine's tokens come from. But in some of our natted and firewalled and separated environments, that isn't always true. So you can't turn on always. So you have to make it optional. And you tie the token to a Mac instead of Mac. Uh, to the to the Mac of the machine. Well, the point is we're tying it to what the server sees as the IP to make sure that you're restricting that that token is only usable by from that machine so that you can restrict its security context even more. And that works in some areas. Yep, no, I, I understand that issue. Yeah, that's the, that's that was the main purpose of this thing. The rest is actually kind of already built into the token. So those are handed out. So 
yeah. That one's still pending. Because we don't know what to do. We need to make it. Oh, yeah. Right, so that would let you have a more secure option. And yeah. It's all done on the server side anyway, so right. it's okay. Easy enough to do, but. Yeah, if, if it's gonna be configurable, then you could do it when somebody hits the security, needs that security feature turned on. Okay, so there we go. Woo! Um, thank you for listening to me drone on. That was awesome. No, uh, Chris wanted to. Um, Chitty chat. Yeah about some of the stuff he was looking at. Oh, I see that. If he can speak. Hello? Hey. Wow, you can hear me? Uh-huh. Wow, this is like, this is, this is, this is awesome. I'm speaking from the depths of my own hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'd, I've got several people that want to remain nameless, you know, it's, there are, you know, security guys and there, the, you guys kept talking about trying to, you know, put stuff into the, you know, head end of a rack, you know, basically a switch. And that's kind of where these guys came from, you know, and I mean, I know them from, you know, years and years ago, but, um, and I, I was trying to wrap my head around, you know, and they were talking about, you know, basically, you know, you know, defending against penetration tests. And I'd, it, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you guys about in general is just that, you know, that aspect. But when I got into what they're doing currently to ch try to check into it, I run into this gauntlet stuff and all that stuff. And it, it basically sort of abstracts it out to the, you know, cucumber layer, which is really what I was trying to do with the uh, UX stuff beforehand, you know, and, th th and this actually ties into, oh, who is, um, uh, Sorry, who's uh, doing the um, um, Ansible? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, all ahead. this to me is starts to looking like the same, you know, same sort of effort. Is it? And they're, you know, trying to abstract it out enough, you know, and then they're, they, they want to eventually tie it into, um, you know, sort of compliance testing stuff, which I know that you guys probably have run into, but, you know, you know, taking that all away, all I was, you know, my point to them was, hey, you know, as as these abstraction la la layers come up, this is, you know, going back to the even the U UX thing, is that at some point I saw, you you know, the, um, the CSS that I needed to get to the, you know, React elements in the UX, you know, start to, you know, get labels on it, but those labels are, you know, typically sometimes semantic sometimes they're not and sometimes they are but I, I just was trying to you know wrap my head around well you know either I just basically the, you know they gave me a you know like piles of gear and they, it, truthfully uh, basically I was going to bring up and you know basically a mini data center because then they want to put their stuff over the top of it and see how they can protect it and then do their penetration stuff you know, test on, on top of it. But what I was trying to get at is that, hey, why don't we do more of this stuff in the open, you know, uh, and that's why I started, you know, paying us, hey, why don't we just, why don't I do a, you know, what you want, but using, you know, the uh, DRP underneath, you know, and then see how the penetration test works, you know, on a lockdown scenario of that. That's, you know, that's what I was talking to them about. But then, you know, and I got another, you know, this is the, the, the ones that's public that's easy to work with is um, there's an animation studio, you know, and they're basically poor. So they always used old stuff, but they, you know, the, it, it's from a marketing perspective, it's great, you know, get a lot of publicity, but from, you know, a, an actual, you know, can they even support the technology that they're using? The answer is always no. You know, they can't even afford to support, you know, what they're doing. And it just once in a while they stumble into some big, you know, thing that can pay for a lot of things, but it, you know, kind of goes away quickly. But uh, anyway, I, so I, my, my brain has been, you know, that's my hell is that all these things look similar to me, but I'm not sure if it's, you know, go, that's actually why I was wanted to check in with Greg because, 
some of this, you know, yes, it makes sense to do from a large standpoint, but I don't know if it's really practical to, you know, work at. But I for sure, you know, I got a chunk of time to waste again. <laughs> so, so I'm only looking for, well, you know, like, you know, if we're to do something like this on here is just, you know, integrating in it with what, I don't know what you're doing. I don't quite understand your, you know, CICD, you know, how you're doing it. I don't know. Are you doing it out on Travis or anything or what? Yeah. So we run um, our unit tests on Travis, but they don't include UX stuff. So it, well, the, and what I was trying to think is maybe I, you know, that's, that's a contribution I could do for to you guys for sure is just run that, you know, and uh, like I said, back in February, when I originally started, it was, you know, I was, uh, what, I was it Isaac that was, Isaac, yeah. Yeah. And I was, uh, but I, I saw that you know, the whole documentation thing, it seems to be floating that up. Right. I, and I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I'm definitely willing to waste time on it. <laughs> yeah. I just, the, the question I have is, you know, how bet, how best to work on it to at least integrate it into something that you can use. Cause you know, that's truthfully the only value I would get out of it. And if I can get it working there, then I can basically go beat on these other guys, which I'll probably drag you, you know, cause you know, cause that's my suggestion to them is look towards, you know, this sort of solution to, you know, push inside, you know, these newer data centers that they're distributing to, which th they like the idea of, of course, you know, they're touchy about all that stuff cause they, they, everybody thinks that, you know, that's their secret sauce, which, you know, in reality it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's their secret sauce is they're way behind is yeah us, we, we have this conversation with a lot of msps and such it's, it's... It, but but you know it doesn't matter you know i mean it's just mindset but the, the thing is is that uh you, i can talk to these guys about it just because you know of my history you know and um it, and i think that you know that, again i don't know i don't know how it's gonna fall but anyway, that's what I was trying to figure out is a, um, is it, I mean, just tr truthfully, I was just, what I was doing last week was this, Hey, you know, I got to get my brain back around this. Cause you guys have done a lot, you know, since I actually had my brain around even that. And then, uh, and then I was saying, well, should I set it up as an isolated test, which is what they want? Or do I set it up? Cause your, is your CI CD chain just go after the packet? you know, it just sets up servers on packet and, you know, test on. Oh, uh, no, it's all self-contained in Travis. So we self-test ourselves internally. Okay. So, so, not, not, but not how does, how does that integration test yet? That, yeah. would, if, if that was interesting to you, I'd love to see the integration test kicking through again. Yeah, that would be. Well, that, uh, basically that's what I'm asking you guys, you know, tell me what I can do. That's a little bit more important. What I want to go after though, is you, cause you started bubbling up that doc. I want to tie a real documentation package to something that, you know, calls out the UI crap, but I think you can do that for the, for the, uh, you know, testing the CLI in the APIs. And then you got your three point. And that's what I always look for is three points. You got your UX, which is what the user should see. Then you got your, you know, uh, CLI and API and how those, you know, the, the, that's what attracted me to this, you know, DRP. And originally is that the, there is three ways to do it. You know, there's usually you can grab a hold of it three ways. And that's what, you know, when Greg was talking about, he says, well, as soon as you can get that automation in the UI really totally can disappear. But anytime you get into a problem, then the UI becomes really important. But consistency amongst all that stuff is of course, you know, easy to do if it's coordinated and blah, 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 blah. And well, anyway. The, the, UI, the UI does have a reliable path system, meaning you can give, you can create a, a path to a, an object. I just, I don't, I'd have to look and see what the browser actually gets back from that, but you can make a path-based request and, and then test it. So you could be hitting the UX from a, you know, bring up, create an object using CLI or API, and then hit the comparable path in the UX and make sure it rendered. Um, and that would be a reasonable, like from a cucumber perspective, that you could actually bring up that page, make sure the data that you expected was on the page and it didn't have a rendering error or an unexpected rendering error. 
um, and then just walk the object model through that. That, that would be one thing you could do. You wouldn't need a lot of CSS tagging or anything like that. You could literally just look for keywords um, in the object. In well, the and that, yeah, that, no, and I, uh, it, like I said, any that, well, truthfully, what I, you know, in my brain, what I was going to do is, you know, your, your crib stuff, you work on a lot. Uh -huh. So I was going to, well, if I can automate, you know, Rob doing a crib demo, mm -hmm. then that would, you know, give, you know, A, it just forced me to go through everything. <laughs> You know, and it and would that, sorry, go, ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say that has command line stuff for it. The, the biggest help for us, uh, Chris, is actually getting those integration tests running again so that for every commit, right, the system went through and provisioned the, the key operating systems that we, we try to maintain that actually you know could run through a crib demo. Um, sure. And, and if that happened you know on a, on a triggered basis or on a nightly basis, that would be an amazing step forward in my mind because we have times where nothing we change breaks, but the system breaks because you know a, re a repo mix. So I know. The yeah, no, I know that. Mentioned. In fact, that's so. yeah, and that truthfully, that's the main reason everybody was looking at that. And then this is where I, you know, I got off into another yep. thing uh, Chris, about Chris package break with the you know it's likely to break with the new Kubernetes release is going to come out and then you know, whatever defaults we have with Crib are going to have to be tweaked up again. Um, okay, well then who's, um, well, that, that's actually, you know, two two things for that. Is it A, should, well, I, you know, I got a stack of crap, you know, here that I can run it locally. I just didn't know if it, it's better to run it. You tend to use the packet stuff, and I just didn't know if that's just for demo purposes or do or you, you know, that that's, I don't know. And I, I'm definitely can, you know, I got the rest of the year to waste on this. <laughs> so if, if you have servers, just use the servers. The okay. reason we use packet is because we don't own servers. Well, and it, here's, here's the big question. I, this is the one I was wondering um, because it, you know, there's, you know, pushing DRP onto the, you know, basically the firewall, you know, that I, Truthfully, that's exactly what these guys kind of wanted to, do, you know, attempt. You know, they got interested in that, and I can talk to you guys about that later. But, I, you know, my my first thing is, okay, screw it. I'm not going to use your crap. I'm just going to use, you know, go gr grab a standard firewall. You know, just you know, whatever, you know, and just to de 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 debug debug the pro you know get the process working. Uh, it, so how would um, yeah that's the, the, the now I, I'll talk on this outlet. I'm just trying to figure out what, you know, what is the, I mean, everything is very flexible. I know that, but then there's, you know, what we typically work, you know, use, you know, iteratively to, you know, bring stuff up and then what we use in CICD and then which is the Travis stuff, but the Travis stuff points, what does it launch? Is it? It just launches the go tests internally. Oh, so it's running all out on Travis. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, you're all, we get like 70, 75% of our code coverage of our system just from our internal go tests, right? Right. And so the challenge becomes, like Rob was alluding to, that a lot of times it's the content packages that get disassociated either from the external source, you know, pieces like ISOs and stuff, or Kubernetes updates that often gets out of sync because we don't have a way to test that currently. And so, um, oh, okay. Okay. It, I get it. Is the plan to integrate that stuff into? We've had we had some various stages at it, and it's one of those resources on our side. Um, it's what we would like to do. Um, we have some examples, and so Chris, we're at the top of the hour, so I kind of need to close out our. Go ahead. Okay. But um, one of the things that we might want to start doing in the community is there's some. Uh, directories that Shane and I have built over time in the provision tree that know how to kind of set up some systems and run through some systems, but we've never um, extended them to either kick off things from Travis to run or just ran them in a large scale environment and gathered the results consistently. And um, that may be something to look at. I'm concerned with like on the UX side, some of that stuff on the basic testing, simple, like, did I get a page kind of testing? I think we could do, but 
Well, I remember the, looking at tagging and stuff, and that was a little tougher. Well, the, the, my, my motivation for the UX stuff is basically I, I always use that as a training for my own brain anyway. You know, it kind of yeah. kind of forces me to go through the process because, you know, I mean, I, in, it, in that for sure you know, helps my brain. But uh, and, and the other thing is if you're, you know, effing with people who don't understand it. Yeah. Just okay. giving them the, the you know, put, put it this way, running one of my freaking, you know, th this is, you know, compliance test, you know, through a UI that they know that they own you know, just get, gets them all excited and they can throw more money at it. I mean, I mean it's, I, I think it's total horseshit, but you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, they yeah. take the step off the cliff at least, you know. Yeah, that's an acceptance kind of position. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, well, we'll talk and I'll just, I'll, I, I basically I got a whole bunch of, you know, gear. I'm just trying to figure out, well, what's the best way to set it up? Cause I don't want to, and I want to make sure at least the setup can be sucked back into something useful for you guys, primarily because I want to use that setup to go push these other guys. And then I'll talk to you about, you know, who you can go talk to them later. Yeah. No, that's cool. All right. Cool. Well, thanks everybody okay. for uh, joining Chris. Thanks for bringing the testing and availability up and thanks for listening to me drone on, on our bugs. Um, We'll see you in two weeks for the next one. Hey, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Hey, okay. thanks, Ted. Uh, I'm flying out to Austin tomorrow, so <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> if you're available. <laughs>